Hello, welcome to Riverside Crafts today and I'm Ray. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this image using Distress Inks and I will make the whole card as well so that you can see what I did. Um, so I'm going to start from the beginning with the stamping. The actual image is from, um, oh my brain's not working, Tinting Designs. And it's a very cute, it's a very, very cute little stamp. So here's the the packaging as you can see it's a really it's called sleepy mouse and it's a wee folk series one and it's just a really cutie so that's the image okay right so i'm going to stamp now because i'm using um watercolor um, it's going to be distress inks i'm going to stamp using versifying claire um this will give me a really nice um black edge to to go and it won't run it always is permanent so I'm not going to end up with it sort of bleeding into my colouring, which is always a good thing. Okay, so just to put him in. There we go, that's him done there. Just take you off a minute. And I'm just going to lay, there's, with it comes like a little, an extra piece um, that does some more grass for you. So I'm just going to put that on. So I've got a couple of extra bits to go um, of greenery on it just to make it fill the card edge for me. I'm just going to put that down because I don't want it the same height on all of them. So I'm just going to put that there for a minute. And I'm going to put that like so there. There you go. Cool. Move it up so that we don't move that bit. Hold it in position, ink, and put it down because I don't want it all to be horrendously tall. So, right, so I've done that piece and put my extras on. All right, just take this out of the way a moment. Now, as you can probably see, there's grass lines that go all the way across, and I want to keep those sort of lines doing similar and just coming out a little bit further. So using a fine liner, um, I think the one I've got is a 0 0.1 is the one I'm going to be using, which is very fine. And what I'm going to do is off of the post-it is just draw in myself a few little lines, nice and fine, just to help blend it all in so that the new bits I've added on look like they're supposed to be there. Okay, so I'm just adding them in. Just some little ones, just little lines going off, and just to blend it all in. Okay, so then when I take the post-it off, it just extends it quite nicely. So that's my stamping done. So next is my painting. Right, let me have a get my bits out of the way. So I've got it on it. I always use um, a piece of tissue when I'm painting because I find that that gives me um, some nice colour. And, and I can take any extra water off and I'm not leaving a lot of mess behind. All right, the colours that I've got today are Stormy Sky, Gathered Twigs, Grand Espresso, Dusty Concord, Picked Raspberry, Peel Paint and Dried Marigold. So not lots um, and it's just, just enough to keep things going. All right, so I'm going to start off with Dried Marigold, which is a sort of a very pale, sort of peachy, lemony colour. And I'm going to start off with my small brush and I use a, a number one when I'm doing something this small because I find I get a better um, control over what I'm doing. Just going to take some extra off. There we go. That's done that. So I'm going to fill in his tail with it just coming around here. So that's his tail done. I'm going to put some on his nose and his feet. And then I'm going to do his ears. Okay. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of picked raspberry, which is a very violent, very bright pink. But you only want a little tiny piece. And all you can do is just drag it in onto that. I'm going to dried marigold and it just gives a little bit of pink tip 
to what you're doing. Not a lot, but you're only just going to blend it in. If you feel that you've put too much on, give your brush a dip and then just blend it out a little bit more. Okay? And it will blend out neat, nicely. Put some on the tip of the ears. And just bring it down into the marigold, dried marigold. And it just gives you a nice, a nice tone. Okay, a little bit on my toe, on the toes, just to warm them up a bit. Okay, now I'm going to actually um, colour in the mouse. And the mouse, I'm actually going to do the main part of the body is going to be in gathered twigs. And then I'm going to do a little tiny bit in espresso. That's just going to give me my darkening areas, okay? So, wash my brush off, just dab off some of the extra. I'm just going to start on the face, okay? And I'm going to start at the top, and I'm just going to bring the colour down nice and slowly. The watercolour card that I'm using, by the way, is Crafter's Companion. Um, so, and it it it's quite happy for you to play on it, um, as long as you don't get things too wet and too um, excitable, um, and then it works quite nicely. So that's his face done. Do his body now. It's quite a nice, quick paint. You don't have to be too um, sort of finicky with it. You can play with it quite nicely, and that just sort of get yourself in the zone. I'm just going to pick up some of the really dark and just put it around here. Some of the espresso. I'm just going to leave it in to just give me a bit of shadow because I'm, I know that where he would be the crease around his neck would actually be darker um so i'm just going to put a little bit of darkness in there a little bit on the bit there a little bit under his ear because his ear would be darker because it's causing shadow all right so that's as much of the coloring on the mouse that i would do all right my, so my next coloring is going to be my mushroom now i'm going to use dusty concord and picked raspberry for this okay i'm going to start off with dusty concord okay then i'm going to bring it on one side here i'm not going to get too upset if i happen to go over one of the bits that i'm trying to keep white because i can always once it's dry go over with a white gel pen or a white um posca pen whichever you've got it's just because sometimes it's not as easy as it sounds to not go in all the little white bits. If you cannot, if you cannot do it and manage to keep them out of the way, then that's brilliant. But don't panic if you happen to colour one in. It's not going to ruin your picture. some purple underneath where he's sitting it's nice and dark up there for him and I'm just taking my time I'm not rushing um, and that so I'm not trying to get it all all too much done just making sure that I've got one edge here that is a little bit darker because it helps to give that, that you give your um, toadstool a bit of shape if you've got one edge a little bit darker. And then you just bring it round. A little bit more water by the feel of it. There we go. Blend that over there for a minute and take the colour across. But I'm now going to be putting in some picked raspberry. I'm going to go from this side. And you can see how it just bleeds in. So I've just put my lilac, I've put some water on. So it's just going to bleed across quite nicely, um, which is a nice way of, of the colours to mix, if that makes sense. If you just sort of let it move itself across quite nicely. Go up the side here. And that to go around me bits and bobs if I can, without colouring too many things in. It's 
quite nice that these colours will actually all blend and you don't realise that they're going to quite so well. But they do, they come in really well together. Okay. Um, how are we doing? Not too bad. A little bit more purple in that bit there. pretty good I think just take a little bit across here of the pink and just put a bit in just so it sort of blends it around a bit all right so that's the top of my mushroom done now the base piece the stalk I'm going to go back in again with my dried marigold and I'm just going to go down with that and cover my toadstool stem. I've found that if you keep your palette um, with less colours in it, it tends to look better when you finish. So rather than getting lots and lots of colours in it, sort of keep it a bit thin. And I'm just going to take down a little bit of pink on this side, okay, a little bit of the pink. And I'm going to pick up the brown and I'm just going to go under here, under the top bit here of, the, of that and just drag a little bit more down there. All right, so that's my toadstool painted. All right. I've um, got a little bit of the peeled paint here now to do my greenery with, which I shall do. And I'm literally just going to cover, colour them in um, a little bit of time. This is the other reason why I quite like a small brush because I can get in to do these detailed bits without too much of a problem. Looking good. I hope you're all nice and tucked up in your homes, all nice and warm. And that with all this nasty wind about, not having to go too far. Have you all had a look and seen what's happening with the online auction from Riverside? That might be interesting to have a nose at and see what you can find, get Christmas bargains. We had a lovely day yesterday. I got to take my my granddaughter to see Santa, which was really cool because it's the first time that she's been able to do that because she's only just over the year. So it was a very proud grandma moment watching her go and see Santa. A little bit sad, really, isn't it? But there we go. So I'm getting this all nicely just done in. Yes, it's a bit dry. Let's just put a bit more water on the brush because the brush is getting a bit too dry. Right. Now, I'm just going to set that and dry that a minute because I don't want it to run so much when I put the, the background on in a minute. So if I dry it and set it, um, I'm not going to have so many colours running when I start putting lots of water on. Right, I'm just going to do the wings. Now, the wings I do using the same colours as what I've just... The, the um, Dusty Concord and the Picked Raspberry. But I'm doing it very lightly. So there's only a little bit of colour going on. So there's a lot more water. So it's more like a wash than it is like a colour going on it. Okay, so I'm go I'm literally covering the whole area with water. And then I'm going to drop a little bit of colour in and just pull it out. And that, not too much, not getting too excited about it. 
I'll put too much colour in it, just a little bit, just to sort of show that they're fairy wings. Do the same on the other side. A little bit of water going on. Filling it up. Drop a bit of the purple in. And a bit of the pink. Okay, take that round. Blend it out a bit. Right, so that's my wings done. I'm just going to dry those off a second. Right, now I'm going to do my background. Um, my background is Stormy Sky, which is um, one of the nice, it's a nice blue. And I'll get quite a bit out because I need it to do what I'm going to, what I'm going to do. Get my brush nice and wet. And I'm literally going to go and do a wet wash. So I'm literally going to put lots of, as much water on it as I bear, going up and around the, everywhere. So everywhere's going to get wet. And yes, you're going to get some bleeding, but that's fine because that helps to add the bit of character to what you're doing. Okay. And as I've done, I'm just going to drop some of the, the colour in that I want where I want it. Okay. So I'm just going to drop a bit of the blue in now where I want it to be. And it will bleed out quite nicely, which is good. You can put it right up to the close to the edges of what it is you're looking at. And then let it just sort of do its own thing going off the sides okay i'll do the other side of the of it and bring it down so i've got it nice and wet taking this down here taking that across and up a bit more blue coming in And I'm going to add a little bit of pink in um, into my background because it works quite nicely with it. Um, it's just a little bit of the pink in with the wet seems to just look quite nice. And that just looks like it's sort of coming off the, which is quite good. So I'm just putting the blue around again, adding it in. I'm just going to dry that off. Okay, just going to do a bit of a green wash across the bottom because we need to have the, the grass looking green. So I'm just putting a bit of a green wash on just to go across that. Right, and I'll leave that now and that's that done. Okay, so that's that piece sorted. My next piece to do on for my card, I've got a couple of other bits to do for it. And I'll just show you those. Oh, last thing on the painting I've forgotten. I forgot one thing I'll be painting, my sparkle pen. These are um, the Crafter's Companion ones, um, and they last really well. And I'm, You can get um, a gel pen that will do it as well. And it's just actually going to go over the, the wings and just leave a nice sort of gentle um, mica sparkle on the top just to make it look sort of diaphanous and pretty. So that's that done there. So that's how I finish those off. Right. They are then die cut. He's then die cut into a, into my my circle, and I've put a, a black oval behind him. This is my for matting layering onto and my bits. Now, how I make my card blank because it's not easy to make 
um, a, prop, a card blank um, for a, an, an oval shape. But if you can see on here, let me just put um, something dark underneath it so you can see it a little bit more probably. When I've done my A4 card fold, what I've done is I've actually left quite a lot here and here off of my die. So my die is not sat in the middle, it's sat to one edge. So I've got a piece, this is where I have my fold is, and I've got a piece hanging there, so that bit there is not going to get cut, and that piece there will get cut so that my oval will stand up. Okay? So that gives me them, gives me my oval then for my card blank. All right? So that's the piece that wasn't cut, and then I've got a nice straight bottom to put that on. So that's how I do my card blank. Now, this is an actual, I don't actually have an embossing folder with this pattern on, but what I, all I did was use my scoreboard and I literally scored at every centimetre. So it was not it's not a difficult thing to do. And turn the cardstock and just did repeated it so I went again down every centimeter And then die cut my shape out of it, so I put my oval on it, die cut what I wanted doing, um, and that left me with my finished piece. Okay. So, let's put it all together, shall we? So here's my card blank, okay, which looks quite nice and neat. I've put, I've used my fine liner pen and put a line, um, a dotted dash line all the way around because that gives me a nice um, sort of finish to my oh, work. Bit of glue and sit this on as centrally as I can. So that's sitting there. And I have this piece to go on the top. I'm just going to lift that up a bit. I want that a bit higher. There we go. Sorted. Okay, and I used some foam pads under that. These are the Crafters Companion um, three mil thick ones, so they got they're quite thick. And um, you don't have to go this thick; it's just these are the ones I've got in my stash at the moment. So that's what I'm using. Okay, so take those off. If I can get them off today, doesn't it feel like I'm going to get them off. There we go. They're a bit sticky. That one doesn't want to stay there. We'll try again in there with another one. No, where's my pokey tool gone? I can't get these off today. I'm having a real problem with them. There we go. My nails obviously aren't long enough. There we go. Right, so put that in nice and centrally. And this is my um the sentiment is actually out of my stash i've got i have so many sentiments as i'm sure most of you do um and just didn't i'm like well i'll just pick one that i like the look of today and that can go on there and I just put this on the bottom like so a little bit of my glue i managed to get that in a mess today when i clean myself up right so 
that's my finished card so it's quite a simple one to do nice way to um using the distress inks you're not having to use you don't need loads of colors to do it and it gives you a nice finished sort of piece that's sort of quite cute give it to a little girl you could equally give it to um your mum or someone so i hope you really like it um thank you for watching it's been really nice to see everybody today um and i will see you next week with something new take care goodbye